Hey, what's up? It's Derek here, and this is episode 9, the Osaka episode. Oh, and Nara. I also went to Nara. If you're new here, I traveled across Japan from Kagoshima to Sapporo in 80 days, and I'm currently in phase 2, which is Kansai and Chikoku. After arriving in Osaka from Kyoto late in the day, the first thing to do was check into my hotel. I'm at the Cross Hotel, which has a hilarious name to me. But it smells real nice. It's a nice big room. I got a view of the Don Quixote Ferris wheel. Shower room and a bath, which I'm gonna use today and tomorrow for sure. Having spent most of the day in Kyoto, check out the last episode, I decided to just stick around the area and check out the local shops. Heh. <laughs> I happen to be right next to one of two Pokemon centers in Osaka. This one is the Osaka DX inside the Daimaru Shinsaibashi Mall. This one seemed to have a bunch of things that I haven't seen at other locations, such as camping gear. But then they have the usual stuff like card sleeves, toys, plushies galore. No exclusive Pikachu here though. What's cool about this location is it has a touchscreen Pokedex thing. There's also a Pokemon cafe which serves Pokemon themed food. It's definitely recommended to get a reservation in advance for this. On the same floor, there's a trading card shop called Mint, which happen to have a lot of Pokemon cards, including some of the vintage stuff from Wizards of the Coast. There was also a jump shop. In the Shinsaibashi Parko Mall attached to Daimaru, there were more character shops like the Godzilla Store Osaka. What's super cool is they actually had a shop carrying Digimon goods. Digimon merchandise is surprisingly more difficult to find than I would have thought in Japan. In the basement of Parko, there's a bunch of restaurants and izakayas and a marketplace. So I went to Hanmani Chicken to get some Korean fried chicken and some tteokbokki for the very first time. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, with these rice cake things. I was excited to try it and I loved it. My hotel was also conveniently placed next to Dotonbori, a famous area of Osaka with all the glowing signage and the iconic Glico Man. It was a rainy night, which made it perfect for street photography. By no means am I a pro photographer or videographer for that matter, but I do enjoy practicing it. I didn't take that much footage here because I was too busy taking the photos, so I didn't bring the gimbal out. Sorry that the footage is unstable while I walk around. But you can see some of the famous street food shops and restaurants, all with their mascots or giant versions of their food on display. I packed it in pretty early because I actually had a long day ahead of me. The next day was all about Universal Studios Japan. If you're curious about the process, I bought the tickets off Kluk. The first thing that you have to buy is the entry ticket, which lets you into the park. Then you have to buy the attractions ticket, which I got the seven attractions because it guarantees access to Super Nintendo World. This is essentially the Express or Fast Pass. It's well worth it because with the Express Pass, you get to skip all of the lines. In fact, it was so fast that I ended up having to wait a lot in between my timed attractions. You don't get to pick when you get to go where, it's assigned for you when you purchase your ticket. The first thing on my timed ticket entry was the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. That said, if you're here early enough, there's a good chance you can get into whatever section of the park you want. Most people were booking it to Super Nintendo World immediately. I just decided to wait my turn. I've actually been to Universal Studios in Hollywood, so the Harry Potter area wasn't new to me, but the main ride and some other things absolutely were. Like hearing Harry Potter in Japanese. <laughs> Oh, 
I had a time ticket for the ride, and so on I went. Did not know this ride was gonna throw me around. Probably should have checked that, cause it says if you have a bad back, not to ride it. And yeah, I have a bad back, just saying. Also, I didn't get the butterbeer last time in Hollywood, but was encouraged to do so this time. I'm really glad I did, cause it was sweet and delicious. For all you foodies out there, here's what I had for lunch. I stopped in Amity Village to eat some shark. It was some sort of fish sandwich, not sure what, so I'll just say it was shark, because Jaws. I also grabbed this Spy Family BBC, Big Black Churro. <laughs> finally, finally, I get to go to Super Nintendo World. I was super excited and I bought my wristband right away, which ate up way more time than I would have hoped. This meant I only had about 15 minutes to make my entry to the Mario Kart ride. But whatever, let's go! Yeah, okay, sorry, that was lame. Fuck. I swear walking through and out of that tunnel gave me chills. The fact that it was rainy and cloudy that day kind of worked out with the immersion of the atmosphere to be honest. Seriously though, as crowded as it was, everyone was nothing but smiles. Like what an insanely incredible area. 
Immediately, I started to collect the coins by hitting the bricks. And yeah, I was off to Bowser's Castle for some Mario Kart. This was actually a really cool ride, definitely my favorite. It was basically like playing the Mario Kart games. The next and last thing on my timed entry was Yoshi's Adventure. Nothing crazy here, but a nice ride that takes you all around the park. Just hit the colored eggs whenever you happen to see one. Yoshi's talking to me. Absolutely unreal. I don't see no glowing eggs, so. This was an unreal experience. I know it's pricey, but if you're a Super Mario fan, it's worth it. But yeah, that's a wrap for Universal Studios Japan. Well, successful day at USJ means you get some takoyaki. Osaka, of course, is known for okonomiyaki and Takoyaki. And so I passed by this place near Namba Station, just behind Totumburi. Oh, it looked so good. It's 12 pieces. I don't think I'm gonna finish it. Uh, but I guess that means I have a late night snack, if that's the case, because <clears throat> this is my dinner for the night. This next part was a special and unique experience. In case you didn't know, I'm a drummer and I endorse a drumsticks brand called Los Cabos Drumsticks from Canada. They have artists and distribution all over the world, including Japan. I had the opportunity to check out the distributor office in Osaka. Big thanks to Phil from Los Cabos and Osamu from TMC for helping set this up. TMC, or Total Music Company, specializes in guitar cables and straps and distributes other products like drumstick bags, one of which they gifted to me, and of course Los Cabos Drumsticks. I had an awesome conversation with the president and his staff, which allowed me to really practice my Japanese, but I think I worked out okay. They also gifted me this pair of Los Cabos drumsticks that were Japan edition. The imposter syndrome at this moment skyrocketed, but these became the most cherished things I brought back home from Japan, easily. Well, I'm completely soaked. All my stuff. Hooked. That was brutal, but I'm in my room at least. The only thing that was balls about this day was that it was pouring. I got drenched heading back to the Dotonbori area. I actually had to switch hotels this afternoon too. The cross hotel was nice and all, but it was too pricey. I got rained in for pretty much the entire night. Might just hang around Namba and Nipponbashi, which is basically the anime area, <laughs> like the Akihabara of Osaka. Uh, really good morning, but this afternoon kind of sucks with the rain, so, yeah. The rain continued into the next day, so I flipped a coin, which resulted in me going to Nara. I was debating on skipping it because of the rain, but luckily by the time I arrived, the heavy rain stopped. It was just spitting a little bit. My first stop was the Todaiji area, which is about a 15 minute walk from Kintetsu Nara Station. Immediately, you can see the famous Nara deer just hanging around, out and about, asking for food from all the visitors. The Todaiji temple itself, which houses a giant Buddha statue, had about an hour plus wait to get in. That's what I was told by the staff anyway, so I decided against it. You can see the line stretching the perimeter of the building. I guess that's what I get for going on a Saturday. But it's all good, I was more than happy to just hang around the park and garden area. A 
hung out in Nara Park for a little while, just walking the route and having the deer bow at me. This man thinks I have food. You're just gonna be on camera for free. I ain't got no food for you. Yeah, sorry. What's up, you wanna walk with me? I don't have any food. I eventually made my way to the Nara National Museum area where I decided to pick up some senbei and feed a deer. I held these things in my hand for like 30 seconds before I was approached by this deer. Chill. Hey, you're welcome. Am I filming? I am filming, hey. You'll get more, relax. I don't know if your pals want any. Since no other deer came up to me, I ended up giving this one all the senbei. Hey, you're really hungry, huh? Careful. Finally, before heading back, I checked out the Higashimuki shopping arcade. Once you clear the arcade, you'll see the famous mochi shop called Nakatani-do. There's a couple of dudes here who went viral on the internet for their mochi making practices. I sadly didn't catch the show this day, but the mochi is so damn good. Definitely get it. That was it for Nara. When I got back to Osaka, I went to the Namba Yatsuka Jinja, which has a giant lion's head. I believe this is a stage where they hold some of the rituals. It's really cool to see, definitely super unique. Last but not least, it would be a waste to stay in a nerdy area and not do a little bit of shopping. So I checked out the Den Den Town area where I was staying. There's a bunch of anime figure shops as well as card shops. If you watch the second episode of the series, I picked up a set of Pokemon cards from the Neo era. There were three different folder sets that were released in the year 2000. I picked one of them up in Akihabara. I found the remaining two here, so I picked them up without hesitation. But yeah, that was it for Osaka. It's strange because despite being in Osaka for four days, didn't really feel like I spent that much time here at all. There's plenty to do and the food is amazing, so I'd come back here for sure. Thank you for watching the Osaka episode. Please like, comment, and or subscribe if you feel like supporting the channel. I'm heading to Kobe and Hiroshima in the next episode.